Before you dive into any code, let's take a second to get a high-level overview of how collection views work. Apple introduced UI Collection View in iOS 6, and if you've worked with table views, you can think of a collection view as a supercharged table view. Before a collection view can display information on screen, you have to provide or define two components. The first is a collection views layout object. This is where you define how the data is presented. Layout objects are built up using three building blocks, items, groups, and sections. An item is the smallest unit in this hierarchy and represents an individual piece of data that you want to display on screen. An item can be a photo, a button, or any kind of view, but ultimately it lives inside of a cell or a supplementary view. Don't worry, we'll cover what those are later on. Items live inside of a group. Where an item is a basic unit of data, a group is a basic unit of layout. Groups specify the direction in which data is laid out and can be composed together to create more complex layouts. Finally, we have sections. A section is simply a grouping of data and corresponds to how the data is organized in the data source. A collection view can have multiple sections, each containing its own groups and items. Let's pull up one of those collection view examples you saw earlier. Here's a section of the App Store on iOS. Each of the sections shown here, well, they would be defined in the layout object as a section. A section is comprised of groups. In this layout, we have two groups, one that lays the items out vertically, and another that groups them into a horizontal container. Finally, inside each vertical group are the items. Items, groups, and sections come together to form a compositional layout object. The word compositional is key here because you can combine or compose these building blocks together to create far more complex layouts.